Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Orthodox Logos. My name is Ian Silver, and I know it's been a little while, but we're back. I feel like I've said that multiple times. Um, I'm back from my trip to St. Herman in Platina, California. I went out there with Father John Valadez from Death to the World for Father Sarah from Rose's 40th, um, I guess you would say 40th year anniversary or commemoration of his repose. Um, there was a, it was an amazing experience, life-changing in a lot of ways. So I felt very blessed to be there. Um, thank you, Father John, for inviting me out. And thank you to um, the monks there at St. Herman for wel welcoming us and everybody else. Um, so yeah, we there was the Ivern icon, the Ivern Myrrh streaming icon was brought out for the liturgy of Father Seraphim Rose. Um, Father John took me and a few other people to the cell where Father Seraphim Rose slept and prayed and cried and wrote. And that was um, an amazing experience as well. We also got to see where the Orthodox Word was published. And what was interesting about that is the way they did everything was they weren't even using typewriters. So what they would do is they would take a little stamp with ink and do letter by letter by letter and word by word, page by page. And it's not like they made a magazine and then copied it. You know, each one was made the same way. And that was amazing. I can put some pictures up on my Instagram story or something like that. But yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot I can talk about with that. Maybe I'll do something on that specifically in the next few days, but it was an amazing pilgrimage, two flights, eight hour drive, and just super blessed, truly. I got to pick up some of the original Death to the Worlds from the 90s. I mean, these things are like ancient looking too. Probably won't pick that up. There we go. So yeah, these are like some of the old ones, you know. So I got a stack of those. Pretty cool. Picked up um, Nihilism, which I haven't read this surprisingly enough. So Nihilism, the Root of the Revolution of the Modern Age uh, by Father Seraphim Rose. Also, make sure to check out deathtotheworld.com, www.deathtotheworld.com. Pick up some zines, pick up some merch. I don't really like calling it that, but it's different. It's the OG, guys, the originals. Um, coming up on in 2024, I believe will be the 25-year anniversary of that. So yeah, See that? Boom. Get yourself some stickers. Stickers are amazing. I've got a few here just to kind of show off. Boom. So, yeah. Make sure to pick up some stickers, some pins. Um, all the prayer ropes sold out within a few days. I don't even think, I think we made one announcement about that. Um, so shout out to everybody that's been supporting Death to the World. As you guys know, Father John has brought me on um, to run the social media, help with designs, help with promotion. Whatever Father John needs, um, I'm here for him to do. So it's a blessing. And there's still some things I need to rectify with people. So if you have a subscription to the Orthodox Logos and I haven't you know, uh, rectified things with you or figured things out with you, send me an email, theorthodoxlogos at gmail.com. We'll figure something out, a refund, or we can work something out, you know, that, uh, that'll be beneficial for both of us. I'm going to be doing some sort of zine or probably a photo book once or twice a year, let's say twice a year, um, along with some prayer books and stuff like that. But as far as the like actual zine, any content that I was going to use or any designs, those are going to go into the new death to the worlds. So Yeah. That's kind of a, a little bit of an update. Oh, yeah, prayer book will be shipping this month. I'm not sure if there will be any left. If there is, I'll throw those up on the site as well. And let's see. I know we got a background change here. It used to be all icons. Now it's books and reptile cages. I, I'm not sure exactly how many reptiles I have right now, but um, started back up doing an, uh, a reptile rescue. So I have quite a few animals. Maybe I'll bring those on sometimes. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm just going to do a real short stream today. 
And there's some homilies that I, I've uploaded on the Spotify, the Orthodox Logos on Spotify and Apple Podca- Podcast, um, Father Sarah from Rose homilies and some other ones that I'll be uploading. So if it's not stuff for me, I'm going to really try to focus on patristics and stuff from clergy. That's my goal moving forward. I am going to do the lives of the saints and readings, and then I'll do some like current event type stuff, which I have planned for this week. There's some stuff I want to talk about that's kind of scary happening. But yeah, I'm going to try to stay away from like you know, being a a voice for orthodoxy um, on my own. I'm here to use my platform for other people that, you know, are more inclined to speak on certain subjects. So um, forgive me if I've done anything that has upset you or led you astray. It is um, not my intention at all. I'm here to learn and grow with you guys, as I've said before. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. These, um, there's also a few books. These are sold out, I believe, almost positive. May it be blessed. I've, I'm getting through this right now. It's just a short little little book. This one is Anxiety. I'm not sure if these are sold out, guys. I'm pretty sure how it is created and how it is healed. And we're going to be reading an excerpt from that. And then Father John's actually doing a book, not a book club, but like men's, I think it's a men's night, where they're going through this book right here, Do You Know Yourself? Psychological Problems in the Spiritual Life by Divine Ascent Press. Archimandrite, Simeon, not going to try to pronounce that. Krag, Kragiopoulos? I'm getting better, but still. And then Father gave me this. I'm going to give it to my mom. Are you in pain? Archimandrite, Simeon, Kragiopoulos. Kragiopoulos? Kragiopoulos. That sounds right, doesn't it, guys? Comment below if I'm wrong, please. But yeah, so we'll do a little bit of reading from A Death to the World. I'm not sure, probably not this one, but... I got a stack of them here, and then we're going to do a little bit from anxiety, how it is created and how it is healed. But today, September 7th, actually, technically now, um, if you know how the Orthodox Church and calendar kind of works, Vespers is for the next day. So, you know, when when the sun sets, it is the next day. But we'll say uh, September 7th. Today we are commemorating and celebrating the four feasts of the Nativity of the Mother of God. And I'll do some scriptural readings. There's not too much on the four feasts on the site that I'm using. I use the OCA site or, you know, OrthoWiki. Sometimes, obviously, books are probably a better way to go. But yeah, just to dive into what it is, it says, The first lesson at Great Vespers, Genesis 28, 10 through 17, describes Jacob's dream of a ladder reaching from earth to heaven and the angels ascending and descending upon it. The second lesson, Ezekiel 43, 27 through 44, speaks of the gate of the sanctuary which faces east. And this is another reason I would assume, and please, I'm not clergy, hashtag not your spiritual father. Shout out to uh, my new friend, Peter. Uh, I, I love that little hashtag, that little saying, not your spiritual father. So yeah, hashtag not your spiritual father. Kind of like, I would say the reason we face east when we pray and when we, you know, you set up an iconostasis and you have it facing east, I'm going to say it has to go with with this from Ezekiel. speaks of the gate of the sanctuary which faces east. There's a lot of um, correlation between the east and west in the church. So, yeah, we have that, which is shut so that no one else can enter by it. The third reading, Proverbs 9, 1 through 11, talks about the house that wisdom has built. These readings are interpreted as prefiguring the mother of God. Also, the Jacob's ladder, I'm not sure if that has to do with uh, the divine, the ladder of divine ascent, because it says, a dream of a ladder reaching from earth to heaven and the angels ascending and descending upon it. If you've ever seen that icon, it's a scary one. It really is. It kind of shows that even, even the most pious monks or monastics, you'll notice that they're falling from the top of the ladder. As they reach the top, there's ones that are falling at the top, falling at the bottom, and that's a great representation of the spiritual life of an Orthodox Christian. It's like, you know, we can go go all the way up this ladder, and it's very easy to fall. So, yeah, that that's a scary icon. It's one of my favorite icons. I don't have it yet. I've been looking for uh, a good hand painted one. There's also some amazing hand painted icons at St. Herman. I was like, I'm gonna get one of those, and then a guy next to me asked how much it was, and it was like five ninety nine. Absolutely beautiful, but could not afford that. So I just picked up some zines, some 
a few books. I got this book as well, Thoughts for Each Day of the Year, St. Theophan the Recluse. And yeah, so we today we commemorate the four feasts of the Nativity of the Mother of God, and we can do um, the scriptures for today. So today is Wednesday, September 7th. You could be watching this video probably Thursday or Friday, so forgive me if you've already gone through this. So 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 12 through 10, or chapter 9, verses 12, um, and then 12 through 10 and 7. That always confuses me when it's like that. So it's 12 through 15 and then 1 through 7, it seems like. Yeah, that makes sense. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgivings to God. While, through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal sharing with them in all men, and by their prayer for you who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Now I, Paul, myself am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in flesh, we do not war according to flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do you look at things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ, Christ's, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is Christ's, even so we are Christ's. That's interesting. Do you look at things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ's, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is Christ's, even so we are Christ's. I should pull out the Orthodox Study Bible for that, some footnotes. But that's the first reading today. That's the epistle. And then the gospel is Mark 3, 20 through 27. Then the multitude came together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. But when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay, behold of, lay hold of him, for they said, he is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons, he cast out demons. So he called them to himself and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. So today's readings were... 2 Corinthians 9, 12 through 10, 7, and Mark 3, 20 through 27. And like I said, today we commemorate the four feast of the nativity of the mother of God. And let's see, let's go ahead and get into um, a little bit from, from this book, Anxiety. I'm not going to read much. I want you guys to pick it up when, it, when we get another, when we get some more in stock. But um, yeah, I'm going to just read a little excerpt. Maybe I'll, that's, I'll just do little excerpts from certain books here and there. Anxiety, how it is created and how it is healed. Anxiety departs with trust in God. People create their problems by having the wrong attitude before God. What would you like to talk about this evening? Do you have any topics that you think are good to discuss? Could you speak to us about anxiety? As you know from the fathers of the Orthodox Church, evil is the absence of good. Evil cannot exist in and of itself. It is the same with darkness. Darkness is the absence of light. Wherever there is light, it would be impossible for us to say that we could gather darkness in order to darken the light. If there is light, darkness has no hold. It is non-existent because it only exists in the absence of light. This is also how evil exists in the absence of good. When God is present in the soul, in the soul, when he lives inside the soul, there is no room for the devil. He has no place there. When the light of God is present in the soul, when God is present as light, there is no room for darkness. Even if we want to put darkness in the soul, it stands no chance because spiritual darkness in the absence of the light of God is the absence of the light of God. 
Spiritual darkness is the absence of the light of God. The situation is the same with anxiety. Anxiety is non-existent. People create anxiety for themselves as they do with so many things. We must be careful of this. People create their problems by having the wrong attitude before God. Generally speaking, a person could have a mistaken perspective of themselves, of others, of reality, and of truth. But it's specifically when a person has the wrong attitude before God that they create thousands of issues for themselves. Pay close attention to this. There might be some people who would hear what I'm speaking about and think that I'm out of touch with life, with society, and have no idea about reality. But what if I told you that I am more in touch than you are? Yes, I actually am. I am a priest living in this world, and I come into contact with the deep, hidden things of people. Many times those things are darker, more cunning, and worse than the obvious. So I have more understanding of reality. So all of the trials that we endure, all of those trials which tyrannize us so much, we create them ourselves. Please pay attention to this. Do not say, what can we do since others create problems for us? I can positively assure you that even if others harm us, we cannot be affected if we do not give in to these things, allowing ourselves to be harmed. Everything serves man. Everything works for our benefit, even the worst of things. It is because we, as human beings, do not approach and face things correctly that we allow these things to harm us, traumatize us, weigh us down, pressure us, and to create anxieties. The next um, title is, You Turn the Knife That Wounded You. Many times, the way in which you react when you worry, have some pain, or are wounded, looks like this. Someone stabs you, and you take the knife and begin to twist it inside the wound. Fine, someone hurts you. Remove the knife and look at how you are going to heal your wound. But no, you do not remove the knife. Instead, you hold it there, and even if someone wants to remove it, you do not let them. And as if that is not enough, you even twist it inside the wound. This should not seem strange to you. What do you think? When someone, for example, says something hurtful that traumatizes and wounds you, you think of it constantly, have it constantly in your mind, and do not want to forget it, right? And if, this, and if this is not enough, you become angry with the person who said this. You do wrong and hate them, and you want to take revenge. In reality, all of these things mean this. You turn the knife that wounded you. But if you had immediately removed it and tossed it far from you, very little damage would have been done. You turn the knife and in no way want to remove it. Who is mostly to blame now? Fine, someone hurt you. That is their business. But if that person is to blame once because they stab you, the fact that you hold on to the knife and do not remove it and even turn it makes you to blame 100 times, a 1,000 times more. It is true that the evil began from what the other person did in the beginning, but if we analyze this and look deeper, we will see that we also contributed to the situation. No one is completely innocent. God loves us. He protects and covers us. He does not leave us at the mercy of others. If God allows us to suffer something, it means that we need it. And we can take the situation and say, Lord, since this situation happened, I must have needed it. Something was not going right in me. So, so I am the deeper cause. Forgive the person who hurt me and what they did. From then on, we will confront things correctly and not turn the knife inside our wound. I can tell this is going to be a great little book. Anxiety, how it is created and how it is healed. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that little excerpt. Let's see, we'll do one more short reading from one of these Death to the Worlds. And we have a new issue coming out. Father is just finishing it up. It's a big one. So we're trying to figure out if we're going to um, change that into two or if it's just going to be a big one. We briefly talked about it, but let's see. Forgive me while I try to find something. Make sure to like and subscribe to this. Please share it with your friends and family. And if you feel called to, there is a donate button on the Orthodox Logos that helps continue with the mission. Also become a Patreon member, www.patreon.com slash the Orthodox Logos, and become a Patreon member, more importantly, to Death to the World. Um, forget about me. If you can become a Patreon member to Death to the World, that's what I suggest. If you can do both, glory to God. Let's see. We can do, 
I kind of like these little little excerpts called Lovers of Truth right here. So I'll read, I'll read, I'll read one of those. I'll read all of them actually. Lovers of truth. If you love truth, love silence. This will make you illumined in God like the sun and will deliver you from the illusions of ignorance. Silence unites you to God Himself. St. John Climacus, sixth century. How difficult is this to love one's enemy? Oh, how difficult. One must devote one's entire life to learning this. But in such a love, a man comes to resemble the crucified God, Haramon Gabriel. I'm wondering that if that is um, Saint Gabriel, Ugabadze. I'm not sure. Haramon Gabriel is what it says, though. And I'm not sure when this issue, issue number four, 1994, I think he was canonized in 95. I could be wrong. I'll look that up. This is the surrender. To accept to be cut to pieces, and yet every piece belongs to God. You are free then. And this is from uh, Mother Teresa. Everybody who loves truth must not only take note of the signs of the times, but also follow these observations to their logical conclusions. Archbishop Theophan of Potova. Whoever wants to hate the world must love God with the innermost depths of his soul and acquire a constant memory of him. For nothing can more strongly urge a man to renounce everything gladly and turn from worldly things as from dung. St. Simeon, the New Theologian, 10th century. Sound reason not only demands that we do not heed those who did or thought anything wrong, but it requires that the lover of truth must choose in every way to do and say what is right, even when threatened with death, rather than love his own life. St. Justin the Martyr, 160 AD. Glory to God for all things, guys. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up today. I have a few things I need to do. But yeah, we're, we're back for the fifth time. Six time, however many times I've said this. Make sure to check out deathtotheworld.com. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll be back in a few days. I have some ideas for the next stream. Um, Nathan's out of town. We are going to be doing some stuff. Uh, it won't be as regular as it used to be. Uh, we both have a lot going on, but I do miss him. I hope to see him soon. I know he's uh, been on the road a lot, so I'm sure he can't wait to be home for a more extended period of time. But yeah, guys, glory to God. And let's end this with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. I'll see you guys soon. Godspeed.